And now the Hansons and Hiatus podcast with Nate and Alexis. Happy Friday, fuckers. It is episode 65 of the Hansons on Hiatus podcast. I'm your host, Nate, and this is my wife, Alexis. Hey, guys. How's it going? And don't forget to support the podcast, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Hansons on Hiatus. You can buy us some virtual beers uh, that we will drink. <laughs> happily. Uh, happily. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't forget uh, to also like, follow, share, subscribe, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, iTunes, YouTube Music, now formerly Google Podcasts, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So. Even if you still want to call it Google Podcasts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At Hansons on Hiatus to find us on Basically all of those things. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, kind of an un- uneventful weekend. Uh, your yeah. your friend went home. My mom went home. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of had the weekend to ourselves. We did. It's nice. I like when we have those weekends that it's not something always comes up, but it's not a planned, you know, packed weekend. Yeah. Just is. doing like random. Just do whatever we want. Random things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this weekend was the election, the Mexican presidential election, yes. as well as uh governors and mayors and you know just like just like in the u.s but yeah. i think i think their presidential term is longer because our the president that just i don't know what do you call it when you don't run again it's not like retire right yeah, you just like step down step, step yeah down. i guess yeah whatever oh. um he's he's been the president since 2018 so oh, that's wow. been six years Ugh. so maybe they do six-year terms yeah and i don't know if you can oh well, unless they they did um no i guess it would have to be six years unless they did two three-year terms i guess i probably should look that up so um we are gonna talk a little bit about the election uh just our observations so uh just our observation so it doesn't mean that it's right it's just kind of what we observed and maybe you know what we've heard and seen and stuff but we don't know all of the actual laws and stuff but i thought it was pretty interesting we've never really paid attention to the election very interesting i was happy that we were here to not be a part of it but be a part of it like yeah. be around it when it was happening and watch everybody what the what they do <laughs> yeah so um mexico elected their first female president in the 200 years of mexican history Woo-hoo! um yeah claudia Scheinbaum. yeah right? yeah that's big whatever side you're on whatever you think that's a big uh big you know Accomplishment, yeah. Accomplishment yeah. for the and, country. And the the two that were the two main candidates basically were both women. So mm-hmm. it was kind of an in- inevitable that the that one of them was gonna win. Right. Uh Claudia, who uh ended up winning, obviously, <laughs> she was the mayor of Mexico City. Right. Um, but she's actually an immigrant also. Her parents immigrated to Mexico City. She was born there, um, but that's why her last name is Scheinbaum, because mm-hmm. both of her parents are um, from Jewish origin, I believe. Right. And, uh, but yeah, she grew up in Mexico city. She went to college there and she had, she's a scientist. Mm -hmm. She got her PhD in California. I think maybe at Berkeley, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but she got her PhD in energy conservation, energy policy and, and sustainable development. So amazing. um, Yeah. So definitely an intelligent (laughs) woman, but I thought it was kind of interesting. The, the other woman that was running, had um like some kind of native or origins i don't think she was mayan but um she was something else yeah. uh so i i'm kind of shocked that the the mexican people elected somebody that was not necessarily an immigrant because she mm-hmm. she was born here right. but somebody with the last name is kind of a jewish last name compared to the other woman who had more of a you know local last name i guess right agreed i was very shocked too i mean i think they're uh, the big topic was like femicide that's happening all over Mexico, and she's a big supporter of feminine, the feminist movement and rights and different things, among other things. But I think that was the big push for her uh, yeah. getting elected. Well, she was kind of like the protege of. Um, I'm going to get this wrong. It's an acronym. <laughs> uh, the the former president of Mexico. I want is it AMLO or ALMO? Oh. It's A L M O, I believe, or A M L O. I don't know. He has a, he has like four names, obviously. Elmo? Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Elmo. Yeah. Um, let me or look Mr. Elmo. <laughs> of course, our Wi-Fi sucks right now. Eh, um, but then also, we elected a new uh, governor of our, or sorry, uh, mayor of our municipality, which is you know kind of like 
kind of like a county, basically. Yeah. You know, we have a governor of uh, our state of Quintana Roo, mm-hmm. who is a female as well. Yep. Um, and we just elected a new mayor, who our former mayor, Lily Campos, who we were actually really liked. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a new mayor, uh, Estefania. Is, it, is that right? Estefania. Estefania. <laughs> Estefania. <laughs> yeah. Her name's Stephanie. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we have a female mayor, governor, and president now. Holy shit. So Welcome to 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> pretty cool for Mexico, I believe. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, yeah. AMLO is the, the Mexican pre- former president. Yeah. Andres Manuel Lopez o- Obrador. Obrador? Huh? Yeah. So. That's um, a nice name. But yeah, nice but, but I, I liked him too. I thought he, you know, I, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs. You know, right. I'm sure if you like, if you ask somebody else from another country about the U.S. candidates, you know, they're just going to go off of kind of some articles they might have read or some things they might have heard. They might not know all the nitty gritty things that have happened over the years mm-hmm. in the U.S. Like you know, somebody that lives there might, even though a lot of people don't. Um, <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, I liked him as well. I felt like he, you know, did a good job, but. You know, who, who knows? I, I, I'm i a foreigner. I cannot vote. Can't be involved in any kind of politics. So um, but we're just watching from afar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's nice to watch and see and just take it in how a different country uh, handles their politics and their voting. It, it was very interesting to us. There's, you know, pros and cons to voting in the states as well as voting here, I'm sure. But it seemed similar, but different just being on the weekends or more accessible yeah um, well i wrote down some positives okay. and negatives of it well and, and first of all uh Le Seca, um was saturday and sunday and if you don't know that is i mean it translates to dry law right. but it basically if there's a um election going on uh you can't buy alcohol like they shut down the alcohol sales could you imagine if they did that in in the United States, people would lose their minds. Yeah, they'd probably <laughs> vote for the person that said, we're getting rid of this. Yes, that would be an easy vote. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's only in the tourist zones so that you can sell if you sell uh, sell food. So, And it was actually right on 5th. It wasn't even like, you yeah, know. Yeah, a couple blocks pl- back yeah, or could, anything. Yeah, so, um, so that was interesting. Um, yeah, so you can't buy alcohol. So you have to stock up on Friday yep. so you have alcohol for the the weekend yeah you know? and just like you said like if you went to a restaurant on fifth that had food they'll they're serving alcohol but we couldn't go to Shadrawi or any 7-eleven or the stores yeah. on Saturday or Sunday and and purchase alcohol everything was locked or taped off <laughs> yeah so here's some of my positive that I've seen just from an outsider looking in nice. um the election is on Sunday Love which it genius why the fuck do we have our election in the u.s on tuesday it's terrible um people have to you know take off work or you know i think they legally have to let you off for like an hour to go vote isn't that the thing yeah i think so Uh, i worked for a corporate company like but it's still it's still a bitch having to leave work and go stand in line and Mm -hmm. do that and everybody has to do that just such a headache i don't it's the same thing as having the super bowl on sunday yeah. It's like, have it on Saturday so we can recover the next day and not have to go to fucking work. Think of our needs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Oh, the other thing with um, the alcohol was kind of funny. I saw people were um, selling booze on Facebook Marketplace. No. Yeah, they're like, How you know, much? six pack. I don't know. I didn't see. Uh, like, six pack of beers, you know, this or that. or whatever. So I was like, oh, oh that's gosh. pretty funny. <laughs> Hopefully they're not like price gouging, but you can make a couple of bucks. Yeah. Like, you forgot I was proactive. You know, yeah. let's make a deal. <laughs> well, and also, um, this isn't in, in Mexico, but uh, we were watching a show about the India elections that are going on in India right now. That's right. And I didn't realize, and it makes complete sense, they're voting period isn't one day Mm -mm. it's three weeks yeah it's three weeks to vote and makes sense because they have like 1.3 billion people billion so (laughs) there's no way that they could you know have everybody vote in one day it'd be insane um and then also there is some law and i don't remember what the distance was but there has to be a polling place within you know like a mile or a kilometer or something of every person in india so i we were watching the show and it was showing these, they would have to set up a polling box. Like there was one that they had to put on a mountain and there yeah. was only like one guy that needed to vote <laughs> for that, that place. Or I mean, they were just like they were trucking across jungles and um, deserts and everything just trying to get polling places so everybody had the ability to vote. And that's one of the things I think we have a problem with the U.S. Right. is it we almost make it harder to vote. Yeah. Like It's like they don't want people to vote. Yeah. You know, whether the (laughs) machines or, you know, the polling places or, you know, having an ID card or whatever. So um, 
one thing that I thought was very cool is they vote with their uh, here in Mexico. They vote with their thumbprint. Yeah. So you I mean, you have a voter ID card, but and it has your thumbprint on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but when people come back from voting, you know how like we have our like, you know, I Sticky, voted or whatever, yeah, like, peach you know, or... the Georgia peach one or yeah. <laughs> they have their their finger is black from. Uh, so when they go in, they you know go to vote and they put their finger in the ink and then they stamp their thumbprint on it. And it has to match their card and your your signature has to match your card and everything. So I think that's a good way to crack down on, you know, I don't know if it's a, even a, really a problem of people double voting or anything like that. But right. just to know who who's who, basically. Yeah. If you need to go back. I really like that idea. Then, you know, it makes me feel more secure. Like, I know no one else is taking my vote. This is my vote. I voted. It's my fingerprint. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. And another cool thing is a lot of the businesses like, remember, I mean, I guess with your I voted sticker or with your report card when you were a kid, you mm-hmm. could take it into a restaurant and you get like a free personal pan pizza yes. or something like that. They do the same things here with like the thumbprint. You can go into, you know, go into this store and get 20 percent off or go to this place and get a free you know drink or something. So another good way to like make sure people vote and people vote here, <laughs> even though it, it, I mean, it is on Sunday lines like down the street, mm-hmm. like people it's very important to other people. It's really sad how few people vote in the U S and don't exercise their rights. But here it's like, do you want to vote? You know, it can be a matter of life and death yeah. you know, or in, in India, even, you know, mm-hmm. they definitely um, want to, they take it very seriously. Let's see what else. Uh, oh, they had a, a remote polling place. So they had two or three different polling places here for Mexicans that were on vacation here, um, that maybe weren't, you know, back in their home state. So great. I, I know there's like uh, mail in ballots and stuff like that in the U.S., but I don't know if there's like a remote polling place. Like when we li- like, let's say when we lived in Georgia um, and let- if we were still registered in Iowa or Florida or something, I don't think you could go into a special place and vote for a s- different state. You had to do it in that state or do a mail-in. an absentee ballot. Yeah, absentee or mail in. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. They They seem like they have a lot of different options here in other countries to vote. Where yeah. at home we have mail in or you go to your local voting place. That's exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> and this is one that I'm not a hundred percent on. I'm kind of speculating, but uh when you see the two or I mean there was like three major candidates. Obviously there's a third party that, you know, got like ten percent of the votes, but I think Claudia got like sixty five or something. Like she there it, she it's not like in the US where it's very divided and it goes back and forth, like one just like annihilates the other one yeah. it seems in a lot of and same thing with um uh our new mayor like mm-hmm. i think she she crushed lily uh, lily Campos. So. yeah um but next to their names are like these different little logos and they're all um like organizations yeah like uh political parties yeah. so like you might have three political parties underneath your name or you might have two um or three or four or whatever uh and like I said, I don't know the exact laws and rules, but I kind of gather that there's not like this isn't like my party or whatever. Like all these other parties will endorse this candidate mm-hmm. who or whoever they like the best. So it's not just a two party system. Like there's literally like six or seven parties here yeah. and like two or three of the parties can endorse this candidate or that candidate. And then you can kind of if you do belong to a certain party, then you kind of you, you can say, OK, my party is supporting this person. Mm-hmm. They must be standing for the things that I believe in also. Right. So, I mean, I thought that was I mean, if that is the case, I think that's a pretty cool way to do it. And it's so it's not that two party divided system where one gets super powerful or whatever. So maybe, you know, that's the way they combat it. I knew we do have like you can endorse a presidential candidate throughout, but um, it's I feel like it's towards the end. Like mm. when it's getting close, they're like, yeah, I, I endorse this guy now or I endorse yeah, this like, girl. But it, the, here it seems like, yes, she has she has what I want. We're, you know, our our party saying we endorse you. Yeah. So I feel like it's um Great like idea. in the U.S. where newspapers will endorse a candidate. But like, yeah. you know, the New York Times says we're endorsing, you know, Obama or, yeah. you know, Trump or whatever, like like each newspaper does it. So then you can go, OK, I read that newspaper and I enjoy what they're saying. So I will support that person. So maybe right. it's something similar to that. Yeah. Um, so a lot of positives, I thought, just how they do it. And, you know, 
I, I, I still think it's one day here, even though in like other countries they have more than one day. So, yeah. but again, Mexico is, I think there's 120, 130 million people here. Yeah. There's 330 million in the U S so there's 200 more million people. So I'm, I'm, surprised that we only do it for one day like yeah. it should be a whole fucking weekend in the states it should be yeah one day is not enough in a few hours it has to be done and counted and it, it, that's it's nerve-wracking yeah <laughs> um and then negatives so obviously there's some negatives mm -hmm. um and i'm literally just going off of things i saw posted on social media which is not a good measurement you know normally for anything else but this is all i got to go on because right. I, I haven't talked to anybody about this right. um, but uh one of the things i've seen in some of the local groups here where it's like local locals like not, not expat groups right uh like people locals. were saying that there are people paying people for their votes oh. outside of the polling places like hey if you yeah. vote for my guy you know here i'll give you you know 20 bucks or whatever hopefully uh, they say no yeah. Or if they're voting for him anyway, like, hey, you got 20 bucks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of them is uh, the polls close closing too soon. Mm -hmm. So like those ones I was talking about where if you're from a different part of Mexico, you can vote here. Uh, they were supposed to close at a certain time and they closed way too soon. Ugh. And uh, so there was like a couple hundred people standing outside and they couldn't vote. Ugh. And they just closed the polls. So that's obviously something they got to work on <laughs> yeah what do you do go to another one then and get back in line or it's just done no it's you can't done. i mean it, there's special ones for if you're from somewhere else like yeah. if it's closed it's closed there's nothing else you can do i assume that sucks uh so yeah closing too soon one i saw one video from another state in mexico i'm not sure where and somebody had set the the ballot box on fire oh, to like God. get rid of all the ballots. So what? I don't know if it was somebody from one person's team that like, you know, was trying to like keep them from losing or something. Yeah. So yeah. So what happens there? Don't you have a record of my fingerprint? And... Well, if it's on fire. <laughs> yes. Isn't there a backup? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I don't think they do machines here. It's all yeah. um, just paper. Yep. Um, and then the last one, which is, you know, sad that it is like this, but I, I saw that 24 politicians have been killed this election season. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it, and none in our part of the country. It's right. all probably in, you know, the um, the more cartel influenced areas. And, you know, unfortunately, that's kind of a, a reality of those those areas is, you know, if this guy is trying to stand up to the cartel and you know the other he's made this other person that's already in office uh if the cartel has kind of struck a deal with that person like hey you give us this we'll give you that we'll leave everybody alone whatever then um then they go and obviously take out the other guy the Jeez. opposition and it, like i always saw one video and it was like during his campaign rally just walked up behind the dude and shot him in the head and took off and it's like what do you do yeah you know? i don't know Probably so. like our candidates back in the day. I mean, JFK yeah. and all that. There was less security. We have crazy security in the U.S. with our presidential candidates for sure. Like even when they're done being president, they're still under you yeah. know, security and surveillance and things. It's weird, though, because it. I mean, you think it would be like I mean, it is like that. But I mean, I met Mike Pence when he was running at yeah. the Iowa State Fair. I just walked up to him. I could have been a fucking psycho. I could have had some kind of weapon or something he and was just did something. Walking around the fair, and, like, and a lot nothing. of a lot of them are like that. And a lot of the rallies and stuff, um, you know, was, I feel like if they're inside, obviously there's you know security to get in. But if there's somebody out in the open, somebody crazy could you know do something. I'm shocked nobody has honestly or recently in the U.S. So exactly. um, don't give them any ideas. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's a sad part of it. But, yeah. you know, that's the way it is. I'm yeah. sure it happens in other countries, too. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh. Um, but, yeah, so the uh, interesting process. So I'd, I'd love to learn more about it. So I'll probably do some reading on it. Yeah. I love that we were here. And, you know, like I said, we weren't a part of it, but we were a part of it. It was great to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, now time for some more random Mexico moments. Nice. Yes. Uh, <laughs> first off, we were with our friends Brendan and Sharon, and we were at their pool, and we see there's these two signs. There's one sign that says, you know, no alcohol or glass bottles in the pool. And then yeah. another one, I'm like, this guy is, like, doing a squat, and he's peeing, but like, <laughs> is it saying don't pee into the pool or don't pee while you're into the in the pool? It just it's a very weird image. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe both. Yeah, <laughs> like it is you, weird. Do you need a sign for this? I yeah. mean, is this kind of common sense? It's like he's 
a little lean back and shooting pee in the pool, or maybe he is in the pool. Yeah, I like I could see both. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it must not be common sense because we were sitting on our balcony uh, the other night and. <laughs> A guy and his girlfriend were walking down the street, and he just whips it out and starts peeing on the pole. Oh, my gosh, I know. In front of her, there, there was like a rappy driver or neighbors walking down the street. I mean, there were people around. It was amazing. And, there was nobody when he started, and then all these people started coming out. Mm-hmm. And then his uh, drunk girlfriend, I think, was like trying to wipe her feet off on his feet while he's peeing. Yeah, like, wipe off the sand. Or I was like, girl, you're going to get some pee on your feet. Like, Step back. <laughs> step back. While we're in action. Maybe that's what she was using to wash off the sand. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> uh, we also saw a group of Mayan dancers in the Zocalo, which is just kind of like the town square. Uh, so we sat down to watch these Mayan dancers. And then we l- look over behind us and there's like 50 kids doing like one of those LARPing things, like the live action role play, like on that movie Role Models. Yes. They all have like uh, like duct tape covered like Nerf. Sword, sword things. things and they're all fucking fighting there was a big rochambeau going on yeah and it was fucking weird i love the police standing there around they're just like eh. yeah. carry on <laughs> carry on <laughs> oh shoot and this last one it wasn't so much weird but just adorable yeah. we were at a beach club and there was two dogs uh sitting on the chair next to us two little chihuahuas and they were so cute, right? So cute. I love I wanted to steal them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want them. They were adorable. But I messaged my brother and I was like, not trying to brag, but I am sitting next to the Taco Bell dog and his wife at this beach club. <laughs> <laughs> they did look exactly like the Taco Bell dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get her Taco Bell. <laughs> Ding. Oh, I'll bring those back, Taco Bell. I we missed the Chihuahua. Yeah, that was a good campaign. I'm sure he passed by now, but yeah. we could get another one. I wonder. Oh. What if he's like the oldest chihuahua in the yeah. world? <laughs> Let me look it up, actually. <laughs> yes. The little chihuahuas really, uh, they looked like twins. We didn't get to talk to the owners too much, but they were so cute. It's making me want twin puppies. When we get a dog again, I want twins. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Uh, so I do have an answer. And um, oh, no. he died at the age of 15. Wow. Okay, okay. In 2009. Uh, <laughs> so I guess I didn't realize how long ago. These were uh, commercials in the 90s. 2009 is when Tiger was born. June 26, 2009. So, yeah. <laughs> geez, that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I was thinking they were like in the 2000s for some reason. Yeah. Like the commercials. I mean, yeah. I guess they could have been. He I, it doesn't say how old he was. His name was Gidget. Gidget. He's a 12 pound dog. Oh. Yeah. Well, bring him back or bring bring a, the Taco <laughs> Bell dog back. He's had to have kids or whatever. Yeah. The ad <laughs> campaign led to a surge in the interest of the Mexican breed of dog. Oh, that's <laughs> uh, why he's everyone so has chihuahuas. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Gidget. Rest in peace. Gidget. Yeah. R.I.P. to Gidget. <laughs> oh, shoot, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, and then uh, also this weekend, like we were saying, it's kind of an uneventful weekend. Mm. We... Um, we did. What did we do for the day? Uh, we went, went to, to the, the beach. beach in the morning. Yep, went to the beach and hung out in the beach by ourselves for a little while, and then we went back. We didn't go to the pool. Went to some beer bars. Well, no, that oh. that was this weekend. We were trying to go to the, some right, beer right. bars, and there was a new. We're like, let's go to a new one that we've never tried before, and I can't remember what it was called. Um, but we were like, okay, let's go try this one, and it was in like the city center, and that's why where, where we saw all the. The kids and the Mayan dancers and everything like that. Yes. <laughs> and so we go to this bar and we go in and it doesn't look like anyone's drinking there. And we're like, fuck, I yeah. forgot the La Seca. La They're Seca. too far away yeah. from Fifth Avenue. So we're like, let's just go to the warehouse, which is this like kind of like Mexican Dave and Buster's. <laughs> that we yeah. to. It just has a bunch of tailgate games. We love this place. I love it. Um, good beer. Good games. Yeah, really good beer. Like good like craft beers and good stuff. Good food too. Yeah. So we go over there and we see some sign outside for it's like two for one mocktails. And we're like, oh, cool. We don't want that shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we get inside and we walk right by the waitress and she was like, I think she was trying to talk to us. But I was like, I know where I'm going. I'm going yeah. back to the beer cave. I'm going to go see what you got. And then she comes over and then she tells us um like no beer no beer or no alcohol yeah and i was like not even with food and she's like no No, like that and that's why they had the mocktail signs Mm -hmm. out it makes sense yeah so we're like well fuck what do we do now um so we we had some beers at home yeah so we decided to go back back and uh i don't know like i was just like trying to figure out something to do for the evening and then i said to you i go 
You want to do some mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> you were throwing all sorts of stuff yeah. at me, and then that was like the last And thing. I was waiting for you that to get shot down. <laughs> and shockingly, you're like, all right, we got nothing else going on. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I had some mushroom chocolates like left over from something. And we go, uh, we're like, let's let's eat them and then get a, get a beer or two and go down to the beach. And it was dark out at this point. Yeah. So we go and we sit down on the beach. And um, we're kind of by like the beach clubs. There was one like playing music. Mm-hmm. It was good, good vibes down there. Yeah. Um, so I wrote a list of while we were <laughs> on mushrooms, I was like, I'm going to take notes of what's going on. Um, so I'm going to read through our list and we'll see if we can remember what we were talking I about. I love it. I love that you made a list. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the first one is. <laughs> Alex- already done. <laughs> Alexis admits to Curter. Oh. It's probably supposed to be murder, but I don't remember. It was probably a joke about some story you were telling me. Probably. I don't uh, think I murdered anyone. No. Nope, definitely not. And I remember we looked at the clock when we got there, and all this stuff had happened, <laughs> and I looked back at it again, and it says, only have been here for 34 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like it was like hours. It uh, was. I'm like, how long have we been out here? 34 yeah. minutes. <laughs> um, I saw some guy in the ocean. And you convinced me it was not a guy. It was a buoy. And I was like, are you sure? Because it's not moving up and down. But then it kind of did. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. But it didn't move. No. It was just there. And I'm like, I'm watching. I'm like, it has not moved. Spot. No, it hasn't moved. It's a buoy. Yeah. <laughs> and then about 10 minutes later, this guy walks out of the ocean. <laughs> and I was like, I told you. I ah! fucking told you. I started screaming like, oh, my God, what's he doing? <laughs> Oh man! Um, and then we're we're just looking at the clouds. The clouds are moving by quick over the the ocean and coming right over our head. So that was crazy. All the different shapes and stuff of the clouds. I don't even remember some of them. You're like, oh, that one looks like George Washington. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a Nemo and a bunch of things. In yeah. There. <laughs> um, the next thing I wrote down: Gummy Girl, ask about no THC gummies. Oh, oh. yeah. So <laughs> right when we get on the beach, we have our chairs and everything, and. Yeah. Mind you, it's pitch black out, but there's still like, you know, some people around walking up and down the beach and this girl comes up to us with like this jar or something and she just starts speaking to us in Spanish really fast. I was like, real, real fast. I could not catch most of what she said. No. Um, and then she said, so, oh, she said something else and we we're like, lo siento, you know, and then she yeah. she was like, oh, oh, OK. She's like, oh, English. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she goes, um you want a gummy and we're like and we're, I'm, i don't want to say like we're already on mushrooms yeah. but i was like oh no no we're okay and she was like oh there's no thc in it and so then i'm thinking like why are you giving me a weird gummy with He's no like, thc in fruit it? snack cbd yeah. what are we talking i think about? it's a cbd one <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I, that's what i think she's gonna but that was fucking weird and then she was like okay have a beautiful night and just like Goes off into the darkness. I have no idea where she came from or where she went. But it was like as soon as we set our chairs down, she came out of the woodwork and was like, hey, want some gummies? We're like, who the fuck are you? Where'd you come from? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the next one, I have Dave Irwin. Dave Irwin. Do you remember this? Is it supposed to be Steve Irwin? Yes. <laughs> but so no, I don't remember. You were telling me a story. <laughs> or no, not a story, but you were saying something about stingrays or something you're like i don't want to get dave irwin and i was like what and then i realized i was like oh steve irwin is it yeah so steve irwin is steve irwin's brother you didn't know that yeah maybe yeah they sacrificed him uh steve irwin is still alive somewhere in perth yes (laughs) he's in playa apparently (laughs) um the next one i have is why can't people pee on their own feet i think that was uh because with the stingrays, we were talking about jellyfish. Oh, yeah. Like the Friends episode. So you could, Monica gets stung and like Joey has to pee on her or whatever. Why can't you pee on yourself? Especially if it's on your yeah, feet. Yeah, that's your what ankle. we were talking about. Yeah. Why can't you pee on yourself? Yeah, like, especially you if it's to, your feet. Maybe it doesn't work because it's your own pee. But how does. Do you think the pee, neut- it's supposed to neutralize the It's like the whatever's sting. in the pee. So yeah. does it, like, it does the, the sting know you're like. DNA sequence or Maybe. something. Maybe it's like you can't tickle yourself. You can't pee on yourself. Yeah. Very weird. Very, <laughs> Very weird. weird. Let's we'll um, look that up too. <laughs> the next one I have is nice hole. Oh. And I think that's oh. because you were digging a hole with your feet. And <laughs> then you like, oh. but the the sand that you were digging, you're putting them on my feet. <laughs> I was and, trying to bury you. Yeah, and then I and that's the goes back to the first one. Alexis minutes to Curter. That's what it is. I was trying to bury you alive. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
yeah, so you were digging a hole. Next one, I have Slender Man. Oh, and, he was creepy. Yeah, that was, I think it was the guy that came out of the ocean, honestly. Maybe. Or maybe it was just the guy walking by. But there was this dude, and he had to have been like seven and a half feet tall. He was so <laughs> tall and skinny. Or he was like 5'5". Five, five. Or it was just my eyeballs <laughs> just fucking with me. It seemed almost when we were sitting there that the beach went up instead of down at that point. So I think everyone was standing a little bit higher level than us. But we're looking like, oh, my God, these people must be basketball players. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah super tall. So, um, And then in true This Is 40 fashion... We didn't like go all like we weren't out to like four in the morning like I'm tripping balls, man. We yeah. ate just enough to have a good time yes. and Hilarious. be back by ten p.m. <laughs> <laughs> we, were. we came back. I'm like, what time is it? You're like nine thirty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we we got back by ten and yeah. It was, so it was good. I, I think that was like the the perfect dose. We saw we relaxed. We saw some cool cloud stuff. We uh, came up with a lot of business brainstorming ideas oh, yep. tons of stuff so get ready for that mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> so, well speaking of this is like totally off subject but uh if anybody's looking for a website for their business shoot me a message uh did you do nate on instagram you can message me on there or you can send a message to my did you do nate on facebook or you know wherever or yeah, our hands is on hiatus on instagram too yeah, yeah. send us a message um i'll give you a good deal if you are a uh, a fucky Yes, <laughs> if you're a Friday fucky. Yeah, or, yeah, if you're a fucky. You get a discount. <laughs> and also, if you've missed that episode, uh, we're calling our listeners fuckies now. So yes. y'all y'all are fuckies. Woo, we love the fuckies. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so like I said, if you need a, a like a business website, whatever, you know, shoot me a message. I'll take care of you. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that was our mushroom trip on the beach. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, it was. It was um, a good time. And I think the last thing I wanted to get to before we get out of here is you had a crazy Airbnb story. We and need it, a whole segment for Airbnbs. I know. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so if you don't know, Alexis is uh, doing Airbnb management in Tulum. So um, she gets these really crazy stories. So what happened to this guy? This guy, and we have random guests. Some are very normal and nice, and other ones you are like, where did you come from? This guy, very nice guy, very respectful, replied to our messages, very helpful. We know that something happened to the AC. He's very communicative so he where we check in how you doing is everything okay do you need anything from us where we pitch that we're your concierge so we want to make sure you have a fantastic trip your whole vacation and um, this guy messages back having a great time this and that had some trouble yesterday though when I went to the beach and we're like oh what happened he sends us this novel like he was waiting to tell somebody about this day oh yeah he just sends it out and is like, well, first I went to the beach and I ended up having like a nasty nosebleed and it went, I guess, just he goes everywhere. People oh. were looking at me like I got attacked by a shark, just like all over his shirt and everywhere. So he was asking us, do you have anywhere to launder this or how do I get it out? I'm, I'm going to have to soak it. I don't know what to do, but um, very. Oh, oh so speaking of real quick, <laughs> uh, have you gotten a nosebleed before? I think when I was younger, I don't okay. get them too often. Like if it's dry, maybe, but I've never had like a like a big one, you know, yeah. like gushing. Blood. I think I've had like three nosebleeds. Uh, I mean, types of nosebleeds, not number of them. Uh, little kid hit yeah. your nose or get hit in the nose, football, something like that. Boom, nosebleed. Yeah. Uh, going skiing in like Colorado, super dry. Yeah. You know, your sinuses get, or even being sick, you get real dry. Get boom, nosebleed, nosebleed. or, you know, some stuff in college <laughs> nosebleed <laughs> my mom said she'd never had a nosebleed in her life and i don't know if i believe her because I mean, your I, mom remembers everything perfectly right. so i don't know but how does she know how, but how do she you did know say that? she'd never played giant jenga either and we have video of all of us <laughs> playing giant jenga. i so. hope you cut to a picture right now <laughs> giant jenga jackie <laughs> um but yeah you think Almost everybody, and not like you know, whatever reason, just getting hit in the nose as a kid or something, or yeah. picking your like kids pick their nose and they cut it and they bleed or whatever. I know so. we all have that friend that gets nosebleeds all, all the, the time, time. Yeah. or randomly, you're just like, oh god, you know. It, but I'm I was never one of those kids. I think my brothers got nosebleeds quite often. Maybe it's a more of a boy thing. I don't know. I think it's just a kid thing. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, probably more so boys, but yeah. I feel like everybody does. I don't know. Anyway, go anyway, on. continue. Sorry. So this guy sends this big long text. And 
about his shirt, but he's still being like really nice and positive about it. He's like, if I can't fix the shirt or clean it, no biggie. Uh, I don't need it. So we're like, oh, that's great. Then he continues on and goes, um, so I have my rental car. I'm coming back from the beach. Someone T-bones him, oh, hits fine. the rental car. And he's like, what would you do if someone hit our rental car in Tulum? You, you'd be flipping out. Yeah, I don't know. Especially I mean, T-bone. That's not just a, oh, it you know, nicked yeah. me or bumped into me. You're, you're doing some damage. He didn't get the insurance? I don't think he got the insurance either. Ugh. So he was like, hey, you know, if you have any good auto mechanic. I always get the insurance here, people. If you're renting a car in Mexico, get the, I mean, not the, the top of the top line, but make yeah. sure it's it, the, the basics are included. Make sure you're covered. Because even if you're a great driver, obviously, just like yeah, at home, get hit by other people else. are drunk and not paying attention. They don't know where they are. Whatever. So he gets T-boned. And then uh, he also explains in the story, he's like, I am a recovering alcoholic and I was going to an AA meeting here, which kudos to him for coming on vacation, researching all these things, researching AA meeting, figuring out where to go and going. And being able to stand to loom sober. Yes, stand to loom <laughs> sober. So he goes in, uh, goes to do that and like call the police. He can't call the police or he calls them, but it's all in Spanish. He can't relate to them what happened. So he asks some people in the meeting what do you know? One of the guys has a, a repair shop, has an auto repair shop, gives him a great deal of was like 197 bucks, like three, 350 uh, pesos or whatever, 3,500 pesos. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like such good luck. Um, the, the whole thing, the whole day, he says all these bad things. He's like, I'm just lucky to be alive and be on this trip and just tons of positivity. We're just like, I love this guy. I love this guy so much. Just a wonderful person. And I feel so bad that all these terrible things are happening to him on his vacation. Yeah. <laughs> There's one thing that doesn't make sense to me. If no. there is an ac accident, mm -hmm. the police come and yeah. you're there like all fucking day, especially if you t got T-boned or somebody T-boned you. That's right. He said the guy took off, hit him and then took off. Oh, yeah, fuck. not there. So he was like, uh, do I wait for the police? Do I like he tried to call Shit. nobody, you know, the guy left, whatever. I, I don't know if anybody got the license plate or nearby, um, you know, people nearby. I'll have to follow up with him on that. See how it just for my knowledge of future guests to know how did this play out? What did the car rental company do? What did you do? Did they fix it? Did they even, did you say anything to the rental car company? I have so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this was a, this was a good one. I felt bad that these bad things were happening to him, but uh, it was better than it happening to our Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's cool that like the guy in his AA meeting had a auto body shop and could yeah. help him out and stuff. I mean, those people are super helpful. So I could see them tr like relating to him and be like, oh, bro, I'll take care of you. So that's yeah. really nice. I wonder what he had to replace that's or like fix. Yeah. yeah. Like, did you a whole door, a, a light, a window? What? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I'm going to ask him. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, good story. Good yeah. story. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention real quick is uh, deleting old posts on Facebook. <laughs> So I do this thing where almost every day I go to my memories on Facebook and it shows you your past posts. Yeah. And I went through this run for like 10 years probably or like seven or something where I would post a joke on Facebook like every day. You did. When we first met, I remember you doing that. Yeah. And it was just to make people laugh or whatever. It was, you know, it was just usually like stupid stuff. Yeah, stupid, like things I would come up with, things that I saw a comedian say or something. It was just to make people laugh. So I just post them on there. They're not good. I mean, they're 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 good jokes, but they're dirty jokes. Oh, and yeah. I I just look at it and I'm like, why would I post this in front of my parents and my friends and my teachers <laughs> and my, you know, family and stuff like that? Like I you forget how many people you're connected to on mm -hmm. Facebook. And a lot of times I'm like I don't remember talking like that. Like I say things that I'm like, that doesn't even sound like me. I guess it's just us getting older. You were a younger buck back then. Yeah, I guess so. But like my brother <laughs> sent me one. And uh, he said, this was from 2010. He said, CJ's tomorrow. Call me, uh, call me and wake me up. So CJ's is a bagel place in, in my hometown. Ooh, and so I commented and I said, BJ's tomorrow. BJ's are amazing, especially when you get woken up by one. <laughs> and then my brother goes, oh, yeah, unless you're waking up with a dick in your mouth. Oh. And then I said, uh, yeah, that would not be amazing. I was thinking the other way around. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and this is like on our public Facebook group. And I'm like, I don't even remember talking like that. Memories. Um, and so my brother sent this to me. I go, yeah, let's delete those comments. Yeah. You know, just because like, uh, yeah. you, you never know. Like, Did he I, agree? He yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. And oh, so yeah. he does the same thing. Like we go every day and like delete things that maybe are. <laughs> We're funny in our teens and 20s, but mm-hmm. now they're like a little insensitive or could get you fired from a job or something. So I think the uh, jokes or even statements that you would make when and remember on Facebook, you'd be like, Nate is happy or, or, or says or Nate says. Yeah, yeah, Nate says, see, so long ago, yeah. I don't even remember. But I feel like uh, the comments you would make or the jokes were the start of the meme photo history or like you know, yeah. future that was coming up so any of the things you're like oh is, why do we drive on a, a park on a driveway and you know drive, drive on, on a parkway, a parkway? It's some kind of things like that so i feel like you were the start of that yeah. <laughs> but maybe well, a little more dirty and that's what like a lot of the memes now are just uh images of somebody's funny tweet yes. or something you know they just made it into a Quote. meme yeah yeah um so yeah that you started it but you do you agree i mean do you do that do you ever delete anything or uh, I mean, you probably don't really have a lot to delete, but most of my stories are Tiger and then me out out with the girls, this and that. I did. Uh, I know on Facebook gives you the option where you can hide things that you mm. see of certain people, like exes. Or, I don't need you to see my ex from high school or college or whatever on my memories. I kind of hid hid older stuff like that. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. I mean, at this point, we've been together for so long. It's not like. You know, like I'll see stuff from, you know, somebody I dated in my 20s or something like that. And it's been so long at this point. It doesn't bother me to see it or anything like that. Yeah. Not that it bothers me. I'm just like, I don't need this. I don't need this. Yeah, true. (laughs) But you might have, like, it might have been more recent at the time that you did start hiding those things. Because I know a lot of people complain about that. Like, it'll pop up with memories of their ex or somebody that had died or something. And it's just like, like, well, it was still a memory, you know, Facebook doesn't know if you're happy or sad about it. Right. I still want the memories and information, but yeah, let it go. Let it go. (laughs) I don't have anything like yours on mine. Talking about PJs. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So I got to make sure to delete all those. (laughs) (laughs) Make sure you, can you like archive it from your memories? (laughs) You can change Like if you wanted to keep something, but you didn't want it to be public, you can change the privacy settings, obviously to just only me, but uh, yeah. So uh, that's what I do on some, but some of them are just dumb jokes that are like maybe not as PC now. And I'm like, Oh, it's probably it's not helping me to keep it on there right you know it's not like a joke that i'm going to use again or something so i'm like yeah it's better just to delete that in case one. you're president one day or in charge of uh, i don't company. think that matters <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i don't think it matters yeah. anymore <laughs> um yeah so all right well uh that is about it for today i did want to uh congratulate my dad uh he just ran his 26th consecutive half marathon uh in iowa the dam to dam um, where you you run from one dam to the other dam downtown. Damn damn. Damn damn. <laughs> and he's been doing it every year since 1998. Even during the pandemic, when um, they didn't have, they didn't hold it. Mm-hmm. You could do an at-home marathon or oh a half marathon, so people could do it on their <laughs> treadmill or actually run the track. It just wasn't um, like sponsored or whatever you know like they right. didn't have all the stuff out there you could just run the route and oh. you know and just send in your your time and everything like that so he kept it going through the pandemic like i said 1998 26 in a row i mean obviously he's done other marathons and stuff like that oh, but yeah. this is his uh his personal record for this one yeah i love it congratulations mark felicidades yeah. i love how your family has and of course you guys still live in your same hometown you have your childhood home and all your things i just love the history of your family that you know everybody down the street you're doing you know marathons 26 years in a row like i just love that stuff the the nerd in me loves it so yeah i'm very proud of your dad and your mom was there to support him i wish we were there but the pictures look so cute yeah well then there's a it was cool they have this app that you can track him with yeah. and you can say it's connected to like his headphones or something or he has the app too <laughs> so like we could send like positive messages and cheers and stuff in his headphones which so like, were kind of creepy yeah well it was weird because it's <laughs> it's like text to speech so it wasn't actually us talking right. so we would type out like way to go dad keep it up you know only two more miles or whatever but then i don't know what the voice sounds like whatever you played me was some creepy robot voice that if i heard it while i was running i'd be like what the fuck <laughs> oh yeah they have a bunch of like weird random like windows 
sound type of thing. Very like, robotic, not yeah. fluid at all. <laughs> yeah, well, that one, but there, it's all people's voices. It wasn't right. a robot. It was just not very clear. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but right. it was a cool option. The oh, app yeah, was for sure. amazing. Like, uh, you know. What, what a cool idea. Yeah, Good job. yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, congratulations, Dad. Super congratulations, awesome. Um, all right. Well, if you'd like to support the podcast, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Hanson's on hiatus. Buy us some virtual beers. If you like what we're doing, we appreciate you guys appreciate listening. You so much. Please tell your friends, family. Uh, like I said, uh, follow, like, subscribe, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, iTunes, uh, YouTube music at Hanson's on hiatus. Everybody have a great, safe rest of your weekend. Happy Friday, fuckers. Happy Friday, fuckies. That's it. Thanks for listening. Goodbye for now. Bye.